Hello and welcome to a new interview here at Direct Cine TV. Today we want to talk about the possible new next mega trend, quantum computing. I believe you have probably heard of it. Quantum computers are still in the phase of testing, but a few larger companies are already using and testing them in their facilities. Volkswagen, uh, for example, has a D-Wave model and they are using it for researching and simulating their battery technology. So we would like to know how far the technology has come so far and of course what's still ahead. Joining me on that topic today is the CEO of D-Wave, Mr. Alan Barrett. Alan, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Eric. Good to be here. So let's get right to it. Are quantum computers the next revolution in tech and in some form comparable to the begins of, for example, artificial intelligence? Uh, absolutely, although I think that we are already in the middle of that. I don't think it's going to take 20 or more years as it did for artificial intelligence to mature. Uh, in fact, at D-Wave today, we have quantum computers are in production with large companies being used to help improve their business operations. So we've already started commercializing quantum. Would you say um, the whole researching system, is it a rent against time for individual companies in which only one can win? Or are different companies researching different topics resulting so in a broader market for potential products? Yeah, well, there are two primary approaches to quantum computing. Uh, one is called and the other is called GATE. D-Wave decided to start with annealing and we're the only company in the world that provides annealing quantum computers. No competition at all in that arena. And annealing quantum computers are the type of quantum you need to solve business optimization problems. Frankly, some of the most important problems that businesses are struggling today. The other approach, gate, is what everybody else in the industry decided to pursue. You would use a gate model system to solve problems like quantum chemistry for drug discovery. So both systems are important. All the competition is on the gate side, and D-Wave is also developing a gate model quantum computer. So we will be competing with the other quantum companies in that arena. But when it comes to annealing and solving business optimization problems, we're the only game in town. If we look a little bit in the future, let's talk a little bit how the research exactly works. Works? Is it a linear process, um, or can we hope for expansional growth uh, through new direct discoveries? Yeah, there are some step functions um, when the technology really starts to shine. So, for example, in the case of annealing quantum computers, as I mentioned previously, it was all about getting to the point where we had what's called coherence, coherence times long enough that in the entire annealing process, while bits were coherent. At D-Wave, we achieved that a couple of years ago with our latest generation uh, quantum computer. It's called Edge, and it's a 5,000 qubit quantum system. Once we had achieved coherent quantum annealing, all this could uh, not only demonstrate but prove significant speedups over classical on optimization problems. For gate model, it's all about action. Um, until we get to error correction, gate model systems will not be able to solve problems. There's no evidence at all that a gate model system without error correction can do anything useful with respect to real problems. So in that arena, it really is about error correction, and we are five to seven years away from seeing that. But once we see that, then we'll start to see applications take off on those systems as well. Well, that sounds very good. I think it's very important, uh, especially for shareholders, to have a specific time frame so that we actually can look in the future. So, I already said the industry is already using quantum computers sporadically. Will this new re technology replace our current ones or will it work hand in hand with today's technology? It, it absolutely works hand in hand with today's technology. The best way to think about quantum computers is as um, application accelerators. It's similar to GPU uh, processing units where they basically accelerate uh, the hard computation associated with things like machine learning or blockchain. 
Um, they don't run the full application. They run the hard computational core. Quantum computers will be very similar to that. They will be used to basically accelerate, improve the performance of the hard computational core of applications. Let's uh, talk a little bit of the uh, financial side. Buying a quantum computer means a large investment for the companies. Uh, would you think it would be possible to offer this as a cloud solution uh, for someday, which companies maybe could subscribe to? So we do offer it as a cloud service. In fact, you cannot buy a D-Wave quantum computer. We do not sell them. We make them available in our quantum cloud service. We have our own quantum cloud service. It's called Leap. And Uh, our, all of our customers access our quantum systems through that service. Now, it's not that we are opposed to selling processors. Uh, it's just that we think right now the best um, model for allowing customers to get engaged with quantum at a reasonable initial price point and then grow in their use of quantum over time is through a cloud service. At some point in the future, if you know a customer wants to buy a system for uh, a particular application and a good reason, we could well sell them. But today, it's all about the cloud service. Um, when would you think uh, that could happen? Maybe in that uh, given time frame of five to seven years that maybe the bigger companies are actually buying a quantum computer? Uh, I really think it all depends on the application the ROI. Uh, you know, if uh, a customer sees that they need full use of a quantum computer in order to really properly enable, quantum enable their applications, and quantum enabling them has a very significant why, then they may choose to purchase a system. But these systems are not inexpensive. They are kind of in the range of tens of millions of dollars plus. So for today, it's much more efficient, much cost effective uh, to offer the service through a cloud service. Then let's talk a little bit of uh, your competitors. IBM, for example, has unveiled a new roadmap for qubits and gates calculations. How difficult would you say is it for D-Wave to keep up on that topic? Well, keep up, we're ahead. So uh, quantum computers already have 5,000 qubits. Um, the most is 1,000 qubits, and I'm not even sure that that system is operational today. So again, If we're talking about annealing quantum computers, D-Wave is the only game in town, and we are uh, we've, we, we have really advanced our technology to 5,000 qubits today. We've announced that our next generation system will have 7,000 qubits, and we will keep growing. On the gate model side, there are many players in the space, including IBM. And while most of the gate model companies started building their systems before D-Wave, so you might argue that we are a little bit behind on the gate uh, side of things, the truth of the matter is that one of the technologies that we had to develop for our commercial annealing quantum computer are directly applicable to a scaled, error-corrected gate model system. These are things that all the gate model providers are going to, they haven't even started working on them yet. We have these technologies in hand from our annealing quantum computers that we'll be able to directly apply into the gate space. So I actually don't think we're that far behind, if behind at all. Yeah, you already said you are ahead in um, qubits, of course, 5,000. Um, there are, of course, other competitors than, uh, or next to IBM, Rigetti is a big name. What would you say if we not only talk about the computers, but especially about the company itself? I mean, um, we, or you want people to buy your stock, of course. Why should investors choose D-Wave over the other ones? Uh, yeah, so, so first, just important. We are the only company in the world that does annealing quantum, and that means we're the only company in the world that can solve business optimization problems, which represents a huge portion of the quantum market. It's ours exclusively from a perspective. Second, we are commercial today. Our quantum computers have progressed to the point where we can get real business applications at production scale. So we have customers like Patterson Food Group, a Canadian grocery chain, Vinci, a large construction company in Europe, 
inner public group, a very large uh, advertising and uh, promotional firm. These are all companies that are actually working with our quantum systems today on real business applications. Yes, uh, in terms of uh, commercializations, um, are you seeking to create a stable linear income or do you expect individual quarters to be much stronger than the other ones? Yeah, so uh, for our business model has two components to it. Professional services, where we basically help customers to build their applications, quantum enable their applications, help them to move into production. It's all done through professional services. Um, then once the applications move into production, our customers simply pay us on a recurring revenue basis to run those applications and access our quantum processor through our quantum service. So we start with professional services and then transition to quantum compute as a service when the applications move into production. At that point, we're building this very stable base ongoing recurring revenue. So in the early days, it's a bit more lumpy. Signing up customers, we're helping them to build the applications, helping them to deploy the applications. Then later on, as more and more applications move into production and we start building the base of recurring revenue, it becomes a more predictable revenue growth stream. Yes, um, if we still look at maybe at your competitors, maybe um, is it like planned to maybe partner up with some of them in the future? I mean, um, IBM, of course, is a big name, but also, I mean, if you're still going to grow, maybe IBM or even NVIDIA? So uh, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned. Um, uh, we announced uh, about six weeks ago a partnership with a company called Zapata AI. Basically, what we are doing is we are working together to develop a generative AI capability where our computer combined with Zapata's software can be used to train models much more efficiently and much more effectively and with much lower power consumption than leveraging GPU. Um, and so, you know, to the extent that that really starts to take off in the marketplace, you know, there could well be an opportunity to work with uh, companies like NVIDIA that are focused on AI and machine learning model building. Well, that sounds very good. Alan, I have to say thank you very much for your time today. It was my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity and I'll look forward to the next time. Yes, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will see you next time at Der Aktionär TV. Goodbye.